it is time to rethink the way we approach education. And I'm also very pleased uh, to be uh, seeing that there are two past uh, president of uh, UNESCO on board with us. And uh, I will listen to our friend Maria, her excellent presentation on uh, the whole approach uh, to um, education, the way we look at it. And what I will talk about today may seem a little bit like uh, the utopian world that we are also thinking about when we look at education from the global south, uh, because we know that we're increasingly looking at uh, what has been said all the time, I think since COP, how to mind the gap, how to mind the gap between uh, our uh, discourse and what is happening on the ground. But uh, we'll still proceed, and I think it is time, as we have rightly said uh, throughout, to keep on reinventing our world and to keep on reinventing this very fundamental aspect of, of our life. And of course, what brings us all together here is the fundamentals of education. Ladies and gentlemen, we have seen that the spread of information and communication technology and global interconnectedness has huge potential to accelerate human progress and to bridge the digital divide and also to develop knowledge societies. Our global society pledged in 2015, and I quote, to leave no one behind by approving Agenda 2030. However lofty the ideals may be, and no matter how many reforms were being on board, they would be sorely inadequate to achieve significantly strengthen effective international governance if action, if attention is not paid to engage the support and participation of all those inhabitants of the planet whom the institution of governance are meant to serve. Public education to understand our common humanity and the global good will only be an essential support to their success. Crucially, relevant education is needed for who those will provide leadership or participate in governance processes and will need new skills, new ways of thinking relevant to their roles in strengthened international institutions. So how do we build public support? Fortunately, with information technologies, this is no longer an unrealistic goal. One prerequisite may be the initial support of a range of governments, as their cooperation will be important in reaching the population through the formal school system and national media. Engagement of at least some governments would add significant weight to an influential international campaign for strengthening global governance and at the heart of public education. Our shared human identity is a biological fact and greater international solidarity among people has become technological possible in a world physically reduced to a neighborhood. People should be reassured nonetheless that their national autonomy, cultural diversity, and personal freedom and initiative will be safeguarded. Public education also needs to take account of the emotional and psychological dimensions of reform processes. Unfortunately, today's nationalism, nativism, and xenophobia are rooted in fear of the other, which can be prevented and countered through education. Fear generally comes from ignorance. This is fueling conspiracy theories, and the frustration of those that have not benefited from globalization or who have lost their dignity and place in society, leaving them open to populist messages. Ladies and gentlemen, the inevitably increasing migration driven by climate change and sea level rise, and I think here I speak from the heart, coming from an island nation, driving among other driving forces might be viewed as a constructive mixing of peoples if supported by education that presents human diversity in a positive light. Relatively successful national policies approaches to build cultures of diversity proactively should be meaningful, explored as models and improved upon at the international level. Education lies at the heart of community building and such education needs to start at a very early age. While global governance may seem very distant from local communities throughout the world, communities are in fact the ultimate foundation for all levels of governance. 
the expression of think globally and act locally captures this idea very well. The values of unity and diversity, solidarity, moderation, and service to others are as important at the local or at the global level and should be reflected in educational activities for all age groups in communities. Local action can be linked to global awareness by emphasizing the idea that each person is playing a small part in the global enterprise of constructing a positive, sustainable peace in the world. The essential foundation for an active citizenry, of course, is universal basic education, as a literate and educated public is essential for the effective functioning of a democratic processes and public participation at any level. While progress has been discussed and been made in many countries, unfortunately, we still have over 750 million illiterate people, and these were the figures in 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenge is universal implementation by governments in their school systems. Universal quality education must become a priority for all governments. Where governments are unable to provide this, this should become a responsibility of the international community and the UN system to supply the necessary means. And I weigh my words here because I think a small fraction of the amount presently spent on arms would be sufficient. States have also obligated themselves to work on education to address specific global risk. And climate change has been raised already. So I think if you look at the framework, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, Article 6 states that parties should promote and facilitate the development and implementation of educational and public awareness program on climate change and its effect. If parties had taken this obligation seriously, the Paris Agreement would have a more solid foundation. A second, st a second latest step will be to define more systematized universal core curriculum for the different levels of formal education that would include essential ethical principle, human rights, civic responsibilities, grounding in the roles and functions of international institutions. Education ministries are notably conservative by change, requiring special efforts to help them understand their important role. This should be one essential component of the commitment governments must take to support steps to strengthen global governance. In tertiary education, there will be sufficient educational research opportunities across a range of our areas requiring global governance. International institutions will need well-trained civil servants and national government will also need to strengthen the structures that interface with global institutions. Certain core skills such as skills to system thinking and ethical principles upon which governance is founded need to be widely taught as part of general education. Student exchange program at universities and international level and who here which are already occurring with unprecedented frequency can be further systematized as the European Union has employed the Erasmus International European Student Exchange Program, building a new generation of European citizens. The time may well come in the future when government will see the need for an official international auxiliary language that could provide everyone with a means for intercommunication with an evolving global system while still protecting national and subnational language diversity. Religious organizations in particular have both formal education institution and Sunday school, madrasas, children classes, or other community education activities. The moral and ethical values behind a more successful, peaceful, just, and sustainable world, including good governance and social justice, respect for others, moderation, and other spiritual values can easily find their place in these educational programs. Ladies and gentlemen, the potential of the internet to reach the vast majority of humanity has expanded so rapidly that we are far from understanding the best ways to employ this potential for the common good. The popularity of social media should be harnessed to misspread the main messages about the cultivation of global solidarity, the ethical principles being applied and the practical steps being taken to make enhanced and functional global governance a reality for everyone. Resources on UN reform and global governance should be freely available on the internet and the range of social media platforms in formal languages accessible to many audiences with coverage and explanation of the main events as before we discussed and implemented. 
the capacity of online education, whether in courses offered by the formal education institution, the MOOCs, can they reach many thousands or less formal opportunities for continuing education all have great potential to build human capacity with a minimum of resources. Reform processes shall be accompanied by a wide range of online educational opportunities, both to build public understanding and to prepare people for the very many emerging opportunities for service and employment. As public opinion in most countries is formed by the mass media, it is clear that the media should have an important role in covering and explaining the various steps taken to reform and strengthen the UN systems. Better education of journalists on these issues would be an important measure, along with the provision of access to reliable sources of information for journalistic communities. Without undermining the complementary role of independent journalism, the UN News Service, the news service should explain the some, sometimes arcane ways of international diplomacy and stories that general public can understand. It should earn the confidence of people everywhere so that questions concerning the veracity of other reports can be compared with a reliable and objective global source. The built-in bias of national perspective is well known, particularly where there are issues of conflict between states. This could be neutralized with facts from the UN itself. It is clear that the reform United Nations need capacities in a range of domains relevant to education, including support of public education for global citizenship. A new flows on UN reform and actions around the world, a significant presence of the internet and social media and close links with the national government it serves. It should create a global framework with ethical journalism, free access to science and other knowledge necessary for the good functioning of global governance and safeguards against infringement of every individual rights to education, general knowledge, and objective information. So I end by saying that as the global system matures, the UN could and should become a guarantor of the quality of leadership at the national level in service to the common good, both nationally and internationally. And I thank you for your attention.